household. Hey Amen. There's some things, and I'm saying this in front of my wife. There are some things, hey Amen. Some decisions I've had to make in my life. Why? Hey Amen. My wife was not happy with all of them. But Brother Roberts, I looked down the road and I didn't want my family to be sorry. I didn't want my family to fall out. Amen. I love my family. And brother, I will do anything for my family. There's not very many people I will lay my life down for. But my family is one of them. There's a lot of husbands out there that, would, that wouldn't lay down their, wives, their, their life for their wife. Shame on you. Your family should be the dearest thing in your life. If you save all the other people and lose your own family. What kind of a Christian are you at the house? When God said old things are passed away, all things become new. God requires a fresh start in our lives every single day. I was talking to my co-worker as he was going to work. I said, I love the beginning of the day. It's a new day. It's a new horizon. I, I, I see the sun come up over Jack Hammer Pass as I'm going towards and I, I said, thank God for a new day. And then God gives us a clean slate at times. And then to, 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 to put things in our life in perspective and say, God, and then uh, should I have this in my life or should I not have this in my life? Should I have my family involved with this? And I know you might say, well, it sounds like family seminar today. Well, uh, and then take it for what it is. And then but if there's ever a time we need to have a, a bloodline around our family so the devil cannot cross that bloodline. Yeah. You gotta go through me. If you're gonna get to my wife, you're gonna have to go through me. First Samuel 15, going down to verse 10, says, Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. You don't know how much it grieves a pastor. I know this is, this is different today. You don't know how much it grieves a pastor. <laughs> to watch somebody turn from the will of God and walk away from the direction that God wants them to go. And then watch their lives <coughs> crumble before their eyes. It is probably one of the most frustrating things as a pastor to watch somebody and then take the things of God so lightly and say, you know what? I, 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 I got to do this for other reasons. The Bible says that Samuel cried all night long. If there's ever a time, I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying this tonight to uh, say woe is me on the nights that I'm up or the, or the days that it's real heavy and hard. But I'm, what I am trying to get across today is if you're not going to do it for me, if you're not going to do it for God, hey man, do it for your family. Hey man, do it for the ones that you care about. Do it for the ones that you love. Hey man, I come, I come from a split home. No matter what he did to me, you gotta fight for family. You gotta look beyond the stakes and see what God can do in your family. You gotta look beyond the fleshly desires of your family and say, God, what is your will for my family? The things that God is trying to draw out of you, if you do not allow God to draw them out of you, out of your life completely, God will begin to draw away from, from you. God will not dwell in a sinful vessel. It's just like putting water in a cracked pot. It just flows out. It just flows out. Pretty soon, God will draw. The Bible says in the Old Testament, God's Spirit will not always strive 
with men. Huh? God can and will remove His Spirit from you if, you're, if His Word is constantly disregarded. Verse 12, it says, And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he sent him up in a place, and has gone about and passed on and down to Gilgal. And Samuel said unto Saul, Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou, the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleeding of the sheep in my ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Just blatantly lie, lie, lie. Lie to the man of God. Right. What King Saul failed, failed to realize is Samuel was keeping up with his prayer life. And God was all, still talking to Samuel. And Samuel already knew that Saul had disregarded. And when Saul came up and just lied to the man, don't think you're fooling a preacher. If a preacher's prayed up and full of the Holy Ghost and always on his knees, don't think for one time you're going to fool a preacher. If there's ever a time to not live a life of a front of a Christian, but to live your life when you're away from the preacher as a Christian, when you're around, I, 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 I tell you what, and then the world will nail you to a cross for putting on a front. The preacher aside, the, uh, uh, God aside, the world will nail you to a cross for living a double standard life. Why? Well, I thought you was a, a Christian. Why? Well, I thought you was a preacher. I thought you was. The Samuel came, came up and met Saul. And said, a sin will cause you to lie uh, to the man of God in your life. And, 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 and a lot of times the man of God knows already that you are not telling the truth to him. And you can lay blame to your spouse or your children, but when it comes down to it, if God asks you directly to carry out an order for your family and you disregard it, God will hold you accountable. I'm talking about accountable. I, I love preaching messages about shouting Brother Roberts. I love preaching messages about victory and getting, a, getting, a, getting your healing, getting your blessing. But there's all Amen. A responsibility of being a Christian. There is accountability. Amen. For being a Christian. There is something that should settle deep down inside of you. You say, God, I am accountable not only for me, but for the salvation of my family. Amen. Punishment does not always come right away. But it will come. There's a lot of people out there today thinking they're getting away with it. The punishment will come. Verse 16, this said and said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord has said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel, reminding King Saul that, Hey, you're the man, buddy. Don't you forget it. God held you accountable. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then thou didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and did his evil in the sight of the Lord. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord has sent me, and have brought Agag the king of Amalek, and 